Um, so this session is about searching within Microsoft Teams. So how can you find content that you're looking for? How can you find something that you know is somewhere in Teams, but you don't know where exactly? Um, we're going to need around 30 minutes. I only got a couple of slides just to set the stage, and uh, most of it will really be demoed directly within Teams. So about myself, my name is Rene Modri. I mentioned I live here in Singapore. I've been here for a long time already. I'm originally from Germany. I lived some time in between Germany and Singapore, or basically after I came to Singapore, I moved back to Europe again, lived for some time in Switzerland, but moved back to Singapore again and have been back here now for well, four and a half years by now. Um, what do I do? So I'm uh, also a Microsoft MVP um, since 2012. So I became an Office 65 MVP back then and got renewed every year. I lead the local SharePoint user group slash Office 365 user group slash Microsoft 365 user group here in Singapore, part of our um, local communities um, organizing our user group events, but also sometimes some smaller conferences here in Singapore and Southeast Asia. Uh, Work-wise, I work as an APAC, and now comes the long title, APAC Collaboration and Productivity Tools Project Manager at Group M. So we're a very large uh, global company. I'm the guy helping colleagues in Asia Pacific. As part of that role, basically, I deal with Office 65 on a daily basis, nonstop, be it Teams, SharePoint, um, Power Platform, etc. When it has to do with um, Office 365, if there's any project initiative, any question, etc. I'm basically the guy to go to. If you want to, obviously you can connect with me on Twitter and LinkedIn. I'm happy to reach out um, to you as well then. So let me know if you've got any other questions after the session. Always happy to connect with you. Having said all that, let's get started with the actual content. And first I want to actually set the stage here so that you know what we're trying to, um, not really what we're trying to achieve, basically what we're dealing with first. Um, scenarios should be very common. I assume most uh, people are in such a um, scenario actually. So you are using teams in your company and you're not just a member of one team, but you're a member of a lot of teams. And those teams sometimes have only the general channel. Sometimes they have a lot of channels. So <clears throat> you basically are involved in a lot of things. There's a big, big structure in there. And obviously uh, in some teams you might just be a, um, Let's call it a passive participant. So you remember, you sometimes look at things there, but you don't do much. In others, you're very active because it's one of the projects that you're involved in, actively involved in. So you're also posting a lot, editing files, chatting, etc. cetera. Um, you are discussing things with other members, maybe in private chat as well, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So basically, you've got a lot of teams you're connected in with. There's a lot of things happening. Um, and the problem now is actually you're not trying to find something. And you remember, yeah, I saw a recent conversation somewhere about a specific topic, but you can't remember where it was. And trying to find it in the big structure um, is often quite tricky. So what kind of use cases are we going to look at? What kind of things are we trying to solve or what are we actually doing here right now? So we're trying to really find content and content is again, conversations, be it now in a channel within a team or be it a one-to-one -one conversation with a colleague or somebody else. It could be a file that you're looking for. So really something inside Teams. And like I mentioned, you're trying to find a conversation that happened recently, but you don't know where it is. It could be in three, four different teams. There are a couple of channels where it is. And obviously, if you're like me, sometimes you're just thinking, yeah, I'm just gonna go through them one by one. But obviously that's not a very smart thing to do because um, if you know it happened recently, yeah, you might be lucky and find it quickly. But if you think, yeah, it happened sometime in June this year or maybe earlier, so it's been quite some time. There's a lot that happened. You don't want to keep scrolling and scrolling to find something, but rather you want to be a bit more efficient in getting to that conversation that you're looking for. Again, also the same thing when you are talking to somebody, um, if you talk with that person a lot, maybe your chat history is quite long and you're looking for something that happened sometime earlier this year, you're looking for maybe a link, a reference or so, you don't wanna keep scrolling again. So we're gonna look at how you can find that. And of course, lastly, we're gonna look at how you can actually find files. So um, maybe you remember a file name, you maybe remember part of the content or so. Basically, that's what we're going to do as well. 
All right. Um, as mentioned, there's really a lot of things that you have in your environment. Um, you're trying to find it, and that's often how it feels like. You're trying to find a needle in a haystack. And sometimes the needle is not as big as what we see here. Sometimes it's really actual needle sized. You don't see anything in there. Um, you're trying to go through hundreds and hundreds of other um, conversations and chats, but you can't find the one that you actually need. And that's what we're trying to achieve now. And that's what we're going to look at right now. So let me switch over to Teams. So I'm opening it here in the browser, but um, obviously same thing works exactly the same way in the app as well reason I'm not using the app right now is because I'm logged in as a different user in my app right now presenting through here. So I thought I'm going to show you that you could do the same things actually also in the browser. So whether you're in the app, in the browser, search obviously works in both. So you see basically my setup here. Let me just show you. My name is Megan Bone. Obviously, I'm part of Contoso, a very fantastic company. A lot of people heard about it, um, has been around for a long time. Um, you see I'm a member of a lot of different teams here and when I look at the teams you see ah there's a lot of uh, there are a lot of channels here as well and when I go into those channels I obviously can see ah there's a lot happening in here as well so there are product launches there are discussions there are some uh, um, documents being shared and discussed etc cetera, etc cetera. what we basically do in teams so nothing fancy here same thing also in chat. So when I look at the chat, I don't talk with too many people because uh, obviously demo environment. I don't want to chat nonstop with uh, other demo users. But um, you see, I've got a couple of chats open at least. Um, if you are working with teams for a couple of months and talk to a lot of colleagues, then it's not going to look like that. But rather you've got 50 different conversations open or even more. Um, same thing for me, same thing for a lot of other people. But for demo purposes, I think um, Having a couple of chats is good enough. So what we're going to do now is let me just jump into. Let's have a look at the big, big search bar here on top. I'm talking about search today. So yeah, let's have a look at what happens when I click on it. It tells me look for messages, files and more or type slash for a list of commands. Plus it tells me everything that I searched for recently. So let's just actually try and search for um, finance review. Finance review brings me to um, two different messages that I have here. And you can see um, one of them here. Let me just click on this one here. The first one is actually um, inside. In this case, actually, it's about a file inside a channel called finance review, which is why the path to that file contains finance review, which we can see actually over here, the left side um, a bit. So that search result is maybe not what I'm looking for. Let me just go over here. The other thing is, oh, somebody mentioned just finance review channel. So that term actually nothing too fancy, actually. Um, maybe not what I was properly looking for, but um, you see, really, it's a relatively simple thing. You type in your search result, uh, your keywords at the top. Just try a very generic thing like project. And you get a lot of results then um, maybe I'm looking for a specific project and I could say I'm looking actually for let me try that mark a project and we can see oh there are some results here that were found and maybe this is one thing that I was looking for so I can see this is actually now not part of a channel conversation but conversation with Joni Sherman that I had at a point in time and I can see then basically ah this is what we um basically talked about that back then now let me just uh, sort of refresh this again. I'm basically looking everywhere. Um, let me just show you again via the project search. So project is a very common term, gets used all the time everywhere in different conversations, within channels, within uh, individual conversations. So you can see I was talking to Ligu um, two hours ago. I was talking to Johnny Sherman uh, a few months back, etc. other people. All those different messages here I can see basically um, happened in various locations. So either individual chats at the top or at the bottom, we can see here we've got basically conversations happening within our different channels. So for example, I can see here it's in the Contoso Finance team in the Finance Review channel. I could click on it and it brings me directly here. Here, for example, this is where the project was mentioned. Or let me just choose another one, Mark 8 Project Team. Go to market plan and we can see here, here's another thing that was basically um, discussed, mentioned. Or 
that's actually the same thread basically brings me again back here. This, these are now all the conversations. So these are the messages that we have here. I can also say, yeah, I'm actually looking for not a conversation, but a file. So I can simply say, I want to select here files, and it brings me then here to, again, the search results for specific files or for the files basically that match my keywords. Um, so again, I can see, for example, the first term contains project in the file name. Um, it's interesting. Something happened with my file, so I can't view this one. Let me just. Yeah, perfect. Also, here, um, this file is actually called product roadmap, but it contains project inside the file itself. So that's why that's one of the search results um, that I um, get for my keyword search. So, really nice thing, not unexpected. So, anyone who's been working with SharePoint knows obviously when you upload a file to SharePoint, the search um, indexes also the file contents, meaning you try to find something. It doesn't just give you results based on the file name, but also, for example, based on the contents of the file. And this is what happens here in Teams, obviously, as well. Um, I look for product project. Project is mentioned in this uh, um, Excel spreadsheet. I get it as a result. So uh, I don't need to remember my file name, but rather I know what um, I'm looking for. With the search, I can try to find it, even if it's just mentioned somewhere inside, um, yeah, inside the content. Now I can also look for people. Now I didn't find any managers here. Let me just actually show you something else. If I look for manager, same thing. If I now search for Lee, I get the result. And you can see here, um, Lee is obviously um, part of the name. So if I just look for Le, same thing again, I can find him easily. So same thing basically as for messages and files, I can click on the people tab here and then it will then give me people. So if I know, oh, I've got a colleague, but I can't remember his full name or I remember only part of his name, that's how I can find it. If you're only a small company with a couple of people, chances are you know of them. I'm a member of a close to 40,000 people strong organization and while I know names then sometimes I just remember for example the first name I look for let's say Adrian or so but I can't remember right now the last name obviously what I can do is then type in Adrian and uh, would find somebody in party not in here but um, because I don't have one yeah one thing I quickly want to mention here if you're trying to find people here it's a um, search based on the name so if I look for director the job title I don't find anybody here if I go back to Lee, for example, we can see, um, yeah, his title is director, but I don't find it because I'm only looking basically for the, um, for, it basically only searches within the name itself. <coughs> Sorry. Um, now that's the generic search. And I mentioned earlier, sometimes it feels like, uh, yeah, finding that needle in a haystack. And again, if I, for example, search for a project, that means, yeah, I've got so many results that I'm trying to find here um, and I'm trying to find something here. It's somewhere, but I don't really know where. What you can do is actually, um, if you're inside, let's say you know in which channel something is that you're looking for. Um, for example, right now, let's say we're in the finance review and let's say I'm looking for this conversation up here. Well, you can actually see it right now. There's, it's not that difficult. I just want to demo how we can actually find this conversation. So I could search for fiscal year or let's say, for example, spreadsheet here. If I now search up here again, um, again, it would search everywhere. One thing I can do is I can press Control F Windows or Command F on a, a Mac. And it's going to actually apply some um, parameters at the top. So first it's going to do a slash find and it's going to say, find it within finance review. So I can now say I want to search for a spreadsheet and I can now click on the conversation that was uh, discovered here as part of the results. So I'm basically narrowing down my scope. Instead of searching everywhere within Teams that I have access to, I'm only trying to find content within my current channel that I'm currently in. So I can show you again, for example, if I go to, let me just go to another team here, Contoso IT Service Strategy, for example. I can do the same thing here if I press Control F. Again, it's finding content within the current channel, so that's Service Strategy. And I can then say, for example, I'm looking for print, and I find again my search result. 
So that's really helpful if you know in which channel something happened. If you don't know in which channel, then obviously you would then use a slightly different search strategy, which I'll come back to in a second. But if you're trying to find something in a specific channel only, that's how you can do it. Now, I can do actually the same thing also if I just go here to the search box again. It mentioned or type slash for a list of commands. If I type slash, it mentions all the commands available and I can do, do for example here slash find, search the page. And then for example, um, it tells me, yeah, which channel or chat do I actually want to search? So now next thing I can actually say, oh, I'm looking for something again in, let's just move again to the same channel so I can start typing. It makes an obviously a suggestion. I can say again, I'm looking within server strategy and I'm gonna search again for print. And it's going to find basically the results. And this is something that I can also do if um, I'm somewhere completely else. I can do find um, strategy print. And that's how I can basically find again my content um, that I know is in a specific channel. Um, what I can also do is not only search for um, conversa uh, conversations or content within a specific uh, channel, but I can also actually look for um, something that happened in a specific conversation with somebody. So let me just see if I got something with Alex Wilbur project. No, um, what was that? Yeah, so I can. Uh, if I know, for example, looking for something in a recent conversation with Alex, I can do the same thing here, slash find. Say I'm only looking at, again, conversation with my conversation chat with Alex and typing my keywords, and I get the search results here. And I can jump in and get to see it. It's most recent, but um, it could also be something from last year, for example. I mean, if you're thinking, hey, why do you do the slash find name and then find, can't you just say, for example, hey, let's go to um, Isaiah. What happens if you press Control F here? And uh, no surprise, same thing happens, the slash find, and then the scope basically gets defined again. And I can now look for something and it's gonna obviously show up as a result. Very good. Drawback here, this method, as you can see, um, Actually, I didn't show that yet, but what you don't see here is, for example, any way to filter here right now. So I mentioned, yeah, if you're looking uh, um, within a specific channel, that's how you can do it. But if you don't know in which channel this thing was that you're looking for, how can you find it? So let's try to find again a specific uh, project. I don't really know where it happened. So it happened in a channel. That's as much as I know, but I don't know in which channel. Um, Maybe I remember whom, who wrote that conversation. So I can say, yeah, I remember, for example, that Alex was talking about something. So I can use the filters here and narrow down my uh, search results a bit further. So I can say, yeah, Alex mentioned project at some point. I want to find that again. And now once I apply that filter here, I can actually then see only search results where Alex Wilbur mentioned project, and I can then uh, see, for example, ah, oh, here, here's something that he mentioned where he said latest, greatest mockups for the project is ready, perfect. Or the other thing here, for example, which is in the design uh, channel again, yeah, maybe that's what I'm looking for. So using filters here can help me to narrow down what, again, the um, results that I'm getting, helping me to find it um, much faster, hopefully what I'm looking for. So we've seen the from filter, filtering who actually posted that content here in the messages. I can also narrow down again the scope in terms of was it a chat or a channel, because if I remember uh, I had 50 discussions with people in different chats, but I know it's in a channel, I can say only give me channel results again. So no individual conversations are shown. If I remove the filter again, I can see here yeah, the conversations that happened recently are now on top again as an example. And a couple more filters, for example, very useful if I remember. Yeah, it happened within, uh, for example, um, the last month. I can say I want to narrow it down here to last month. Let's filter it. Uh, nothing was found actually. Um, didn't have any conversation. Or I can, uh, actually there is something here interesting. Let me just try again. Um, happened, that happened actually today. All right. 
Ah, okay, last month, meaning obviously a uh, small error from my side, um, you Sarah. It happened in the last month, meaning right now we're in October. Um, obviously, if I say last month in uh, September, then the conversation that I was looking for didn't occur last month, but rather two hours ago. So if I use this month, yeah, there it is. That's what I'm looking for. So basically, date filters help you. You can also, um, again, narrow down by team and um, let me just select one and maybe also a specific channel if you wanted to or do all of them. And uh, yeah, a couple of other things here and we can clear filters again. When we look at the files, we also have some filters here, but not as many. When I say some filters, actually, again, you can filter by team. When you remember, oh, in which team something happened, you can um, filter by type. So if you know, oh, I'm not looking for a spreadsheet or Word document or anything like that. I know it's a PowerPoint presentation that was recently updated. I can filter by file type, PowerPoint, click filter, and I only get basically the corresponding results. The other important thing then is if I know a certain person modified it, um, let me just uh, use myself actually, um, then I can see everything that this person actually um, updated here recently and I can then hopefully find again what I'm looking for. All right, so using those filters and using the um, basically the narrow down scope search should really help you a lot in, fi try in finding that content. But there's one other thing I quickly want to show you. So if I'm looking for again, uh, Mark H uh, project, you see, I get two search results now. Um, what if I'm really only looking for this specific term, Mark 8 project? So I'm not looking for Mark 8 and project somewhere else mentioned, but really Mark 8 project. I can actually put quotation marks around it, search again, and it will um, give me results for this exact quote only. So if I, let me just actually grab another term that I'm trying to remember. Um, one that I was looking for, budget analysis, no. Ah. I already got lost in my demo environment because there was a conversation that happened a couple of months back with some keywords that I wanted to use, but I now can't find it anymore. Let me just try retail, no. What a launch was it here? No, then let's just use our Mark 8 project again. Never mind. So we can see, um, I just showed you basically how to use the quotation marks. What I can do is, for example, also if I'm looking for um, project discussions, so let me just try to find something project. Review, I think that was the, where did my conversation go? Uh, go J. Okay, good. Um, that actually brings me a little bit to where I wanted to go. Uh, so we can see now I was looking for project team, but I don't see what I'm looking for. I see projected and teams, and I've seen something here with team. Um, what if I'm looking for either of them? So I'm looking for project and team here right now. Basically, give me everything but one of those keywords is actually present. What if I want to have either project or team mentioned? Um, this is what I would then get back, for example. So if I look for Mark 8 or um, next gen, for example. So I know I'm looking for two specific things here, two specific terms, and I want to get results for both of them. So what it gives me now back here um, is um, everything that contains either Mark 8 or that contains next gen. And I can see, for example, first result is next gen, next gen, Mark 8, next gen, Mark 8, Mark 8, etc., etc. 
And you can see basically also what I was doing. I was typing it here, um, the OR uh, in capital letters, because if I do it like this, um, the OR is not um, recognized as a, um, what's that actually called? Um, I've got the name, sorry about that. Um, it's not one of those, uh, um, uh, I can't remember what they're called. Uh, yeah, it's one of those things basically and or those uh, um, things. <laughs> um, I have to basically capitalize it for it to work. And actually, if I know, for example, really, again, I'm looking for one of those. Again, I can find it here. I can also do, for example, um, slash find. I'm looking for something with uh, Alex. Wilbur, and I'm finding Mark 8 or next gen. I can see now here, for example, um, the results. But interestingly, you see, um, it's not just basically um, the conversations that happened with Alex Wilbur only, but small problem here, I get actually all the results. So while I try to narrow down this code to Alex Wilbur, somehow um, we see all the results again, um, even though Alex Wilbur didn't actually participate or it's not a conversation with Alex Wilbur. So that's one important thing. Sometimes when you're trying to find something, um, the different key, uh, the different search mechanisms might conflict with each other. It looks like the one on the right, for example, takes precedence over the one on the left here. OK, so we've seen now how we can uh, um, find content generally by using the search box. Using the keyword search, we saw how we can also um, narrow down search by using the slash find command or going into a channel and using control F, for example, to narrow down the scope to a specific channel only. We've seen some filters. We've seen that uh, content in channels, in conversations, in files gets found. And we see now also that this um, uh, uh, query language um, also helps us then to find results more easily for trying to really um, get different kinds of results combined together. Like if I know, oh, I mentioned again, basically, if I know, for example, we were having a recent discussion, and I remember it was about one or two things, I can use that or, for example, to find that conversation hopefully much faster. But yeah, um, using those kind of uh, techniques should be allowing you to find what you're looking for much faster. We know that there's a lot of growth within teams usually. If companies use it actively, if employees use it actively, then there's a lot of things happening. And uh, trying to find content is not something where then I can try to think about, yeah, in which channel did it happen? Then you go there and you scroll through everything or so, but rather you try to use the search and you're trying to use those filters um, to really make it a bit smarter in terms of what you're getting as results and how you are finding things. Um, having said all that, um, I'm now nearing the end of the session. Let me just quickly jump back to the presentation. But yeah, that's basically what I just mentioned. When you're searching, search smarter. So use that contextual search. If you know where you're looking for something, use the filters to narrow down the results. So if you've got a lot of search results, you can still actually use the filters then to reduce the number of results so that um, what you're looking for is something that you will hopefully find much easier. Search modifiers, that's the term I was looking for, the and or, and or um, search modifiers, use them to make it a bit clearer what exactly you're looking for, because if you're just typing in keywords, um, it's considered to be yeah, ands, but if you're using, for example, quotation marks or or um, the search modifier, that will give you more possibilities. 